Section 10.7 is on special segments in a circle. When two chords intersect inside a circle, each chord is divided into two chord segments. So here we have chord AB and chord CD that intersect inside the circle at point E. We say that AE and EB and CE and ED are chord segments. Not the whole chord, just the segment of the chord that's formed when two chords intersect each other. And here's a theorem. If two chords intersect in a circle, then the products of the lengths of the chord segments are equal. So in other words, if you have chord segment AE multiplied by times EB, that's going to be equal to CE times ED. Multiply the two parts of this one, and that's going to be equal to the two parts of this one multiplied together. And here's an example. So here we have two chords intersecting inside a circle. Let's deal with this one first. So I have x plus 4 is the length of one chord segment, and x plus 2 is the length of the other chord segment that makes up that chord, and that's going to be equal to x, which is a chord segment, times x plus 10, which is its corresponding chord segment. So multiplying that out, foiling this here, I'm going to get x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals x squared plus 10x. Nice thing about this is I have an x squared on both sides, so when I subtract an x squared, those go away, which makes it nice. Subtracting 6x on both sides and dividing by 4, x is equal to 2. Here's some more definitions. A secant segment is a segment of a secant that has exactly one endpoint on the circle. So taking a look at this diagram here, AC would be a secant segment because one endpoint, point C, is on the circle. AB would be a secant segment because point B is on the circle. AE is a secant segment and AD is a secant segment. Now an external secant segment is the secant segment that lies in the exterior of the circle. In that case, this would be only AB and AD because they're outside the circle. Now, here is a very wordy theorem, but it's pretty straightforward once you get past the language and unpack it a little bit. If two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, so we have two secants that intersect out here in the circle, then the product of the measures of one secant segment and its external secant segment is equal to the product of the measures of the other secant segment and its external secant segment. In other words, the whole thing, so AC times just the outside part, AB, is equal to, on the other side, the whole thing, AE, times the outside part, AD. The whole thing times the outside part equals the whole thing times the outside part. Let's take a look at an example that uses this. So here we have a circle with two secants intersecting outside the circle. So let's go ahead and set that up. Starting with the top one here, the length of that whole secant segment is x plus 8. Be careful, a lot of people will just want to multiply those, but it's actually 8 is that segment x is this segment, so that's x plus 8, so that's the whole thing, and that gets multiplied by just the outside part. And that's equal to, over here, the whole thing is 34 times just the outside part, which is 10. So 8x plus 64 equals 340. Subtracting 64 from both sides, 8x equals 276, or x is equal to 34.5. Remember to set this up. It's the whole secant segment times just the outside part, which equals the whole secant segment times just the outside part. A tangent segment is a segment of a tangent with one endpoint on the circle. So while line AB is the whole tangent line, 
AB, segment AB, would be a tangent segment. And here's the theorem that uses that. If a tangent and a secant intersect in the exterior of a circle, so here's your tangent AB, and here's your secant AD, and they intersect outside the circle, then the square of the measure of the tangent segment is equal to the product of the measure of the secant segment and its external secant segment. So, in other words, the square of the tangent, so AB squared, is equal to the whole thing, the whole secant, which is AD, times just the outside part, which is AC. And here's an example that uses that. So I have a circle with a tangent that's 10 units long and a secant segment over here. So the tangent squared, which would be 10 squared, is equal to the whole thing. So x plus 4 plus x, which is 2x plus 4, times just the outside part, which is x. So tangent squared equals the whole thing, x plus x plus 4, which is 2x plus 4, times the outside part, which is x. So that's 100 equals 2x squared plus 4x. Oops. Okay. This is actually a quadratic equation because I have an x squared. The way you solve a quadratic equation is make it equal 0. So I will subtract 100 from both sides. And one thing I'm noticing with this quadratic equation is everything is divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. 4x divided by 2 is 2x. And negative 100 divided by 2 is 50. Now, normally I would try to factor this. So I'd be looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 50 and add to a positive 2. And all of the factor pairs of 50 that I can think of so that would be 1 and 50, 2 and 25, uh, 5 and 10. I think that's about it. None of those added together or subtracted can give me a 2. So in this case, I need to use the quadratic formula. So you remember the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Or if you have the quadratic, quadratic formula program in your calculator, just plug it in and you will get that x is approximately equal to 6.1. If you end up with a negative value, toss that out because x in this case cannot be negative because x is the length of this exterior secant segment. In this section, we talked about some special segments in a circle. We had two secants intersecting inside a circle. We had two secants intersecting outside a circle and a secant and a tangent intersecting outside a circle as well. Lots of theorems. Make sure you practice them and be able to recognize from the diagram which one of these theorems you're going to use.